You know, Sunil Katabuchi is a fascinating man. He was at one time the screenwriter of Sherlock Hound, many for the Miyazaki episodes, and has a very rich history, being almost the director of Kiki's delivery service at the age of 28, still ending up as the assistant director, and I wish I had more time to talk about it, but maybe another time. He's had quite the career path, including things like his directing debut, Princess Arietti, or that he's worked on multiple video games, including as a director for the Ace Combat series, which he still works on to this day even going from a couple of TV shows from Black Lagoon to Lassie, which are on completely opposite sides of the spectrum, or his time working at Disney in the 80s. He's definitely one of the more eclectic figures. But today we have to talk about his pretty successful movie career, with the help of Mariama, that is. With My My Miracle being the start of that relationship, it's a lavish Japanese countryside movie that focuses around young school kids on their day-to-day. -day. The opening helps set the tone with its OST, a cappella, choir, it's light breezy and you can feel the childhood going throughout it and the rising soundtrack into the opening title is pretty kino if I do say so myself. And they do continue using these motifs throughout the film. The director wanted to describe My My Miracle as a friendship of two. In particular, we're talking about a relationship of these two girls from very different paths. And this in itself was an adaptation of Nobuko Tagagi's novelization of her autobiography. And there's definitely a meticulous design work in constructing the setting that's going back to roughly the 50s, or even a millennium before that. Katabuchi prides himself on capturing worlds. You cannot construct a world with just one's imagination, so what I try to do is interpret the real world and reflect that in my work. As for My My Miracle, I try to go to the exact place the author lived in her childhood and see the view of the author saw as a child. These intricate moments bring it to another level, especially when we're talking about the animation. The animation director and storyboarder, Chie Uretani, who also happens to be the director's wife, and they've been collaborating together for many decades, and certainly one of the most pivotal persons in his projects, his own muse, you could say, starting working together as probably as far back as like Studio Ghibli times with Kiki. I don't draw myself anymore. My wife, Chie, is in charge of the drawings. My inspiration comes from trying to figure out what inspires my wife's imagination. The intricacies we're talking about are highlighted in the scene with the colored pencils, in a way that makes me wince more than any gore scene I can think of off the top of my head, especially as an artist. <laughs> Just the unbridled force to snap a pencil that I know are so pricey, and the bountiful chunks that are carved off, it's, oof. It's effective animation at its finest. If I did not become an animation director, I wanted to become a cameraman for nature documentaries. In My My Miracle, the camera work follows the protagonist Shinko, even if it was only for a tiny movement. Stuff like pan focus on the field, the angle of the shot uses 3D space. Perhaps in live action, these shots would have been more simple, but they're so technical to do in animation for things as simple as walking down the road. They would have had to be constructed in After Effects in all manner of ways to get the 3D layers correct. Which is an interesting choice considering the rest of the production tends to be so lo-fi for Katabuchi. You have painted backgrounds from the art director who was a veteran of Madhouse, Shinichi Urahara, hand-drawn frames mainly that are only coloured in an old version of Photoshop, and the program to preview this stuff doesn't even work on new operating systems. It really is about the execution rather than the cleanest materials here. And it all works very well, in a timeless fashion, especially with the directing techniques which are more mature than perhaps their budget. <laughs> When you see the cart scene, it really shows an amazing switch between different times as they fade between periods. Now, if we were talking about Satoshi Kon, there would be a hard cut between these worlds, creating a disorientating feeling. But Katabuchi's transitions are like specters of the past that fade in softly or sometimes imagination becoming reality, in the case of the children's scribbles. It's so wonderful how it draws you into these multiple periods at the same time. And to make sure that the past scenes were as correct as they could be, they used something called the pillow book to make sure the history was accurate to those time periods. If you've ever seen a couple of Takahata's movies, you certainly get that same feeling of Kaguya was inspired by the same book. Now this project was actually a long time coming. It's funny that the author had to choose between Black Lagoon or this first, yet still came back to it because there's something intrinsically alluring about My My Miracle. On the surface premise, it would be hard to feel 
why that would be, but I think there's something kind of subtle and intrinsically soothing about the experience of watching this. And Katabuchi has an act for bringing this to life. Say, for example, the difference between the rich and rural families, or the westernized or traditional Japanese living. The friendship between the girls really highlights some of that. As Kiko lives in a new residence that was just built, it's more suburbanized down to having actual stairs and a working refrigerator. As the audience, both of these walks of life seem so far away, but they kind of intrinsically draw you in to sort of understand a bit about their living situations, to understand how it is to live a day in their life. Kiko, the girl, actually becomes more confident as they go, being less of an outsider, and then begins to open up. A highlight of this is probably the alcohol chocolate scene, which I'm pretty sure is also featured in an episode of Card Capra Sakura, which Katabuchi happened to storyboard. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if there's a connection there. Mm. But it's so strangely joyous to watch these kids get absolutely plastered on this chocolate. It really shouldn't be, I suppose, but it's a, a real highlight to uh, see. It needs to be seen to be believed. There's an idea the director brings up about the beauty of living in all manners, in the small things. I've always felt that finding and expressing the moments of happiness, beauty, and the brilliance of life, even those moments that no one pays attention to, are important. Through animation, I best capture these feelings. The life of the every person is not to be dismissed, because it is the story of the every person there is brilliance to be discovered. While the scene is mostly played for comedy, it is actually the exceedingly dark tragedies that sort of appear within it and are played in such a way which shows the strength of Katabuchi's balancing job. <laughs> Beyond that, the gang sort of mostly going on misadventures, if that be dam building or sneaking through caves, losing five-year-old girls. Some of them are definitely familiar to the area if you've seen any of these kind of projects before, if that be Nippon or Ghibli. But I do think they come together in a very effective way with tinges of darkness, even if the brightness is beaming over this. In total, that is until the ending when the realities start to crack through on that childhood innocence. The color palettes change to a moody neon backdrop if you see the seedier part of town. But there is something encouraging in it all as we make it through. If that be the encouraging friendships that blossom throughout, the warmth between that, even in its bittersweet moments. While it is a happy story overall, it is a story where people are dealing with loss. If that be a family member they barely remember anymore, or ones where the wounds are very much raw. The memories of who they are, how they impact their lives, leave is the cornerstone of it all, even if it's people who've lived a millennium ago. You know, to learn from those experiences, that tragedy is a part of life and part of growing up. It becomes almost like a universal language between generations. Even I can feel some of it towards my youth running around fields and playing outside. It's a, yeah, there is definitely something that speaks beyond its Japanese audience. And it's something that was brought up by both the producer and the director. As for My My Miracle, after the producer read the original novel, he brought it to me and saying that this book reminds him of his youth. The funny thing is that he is much younger than I, and the book was about the childhood of people older than me. That is when I felt there must be something universal that foregoes age differences. The Katabuchi was always prepped for a, like a more international audience since this film was even premiering in Switzerland back in 2009. And this is probably a reason that he has gone on to more successes in the future. One of the viewers came to me and told me, possibly a Canadian, that this film reminded him of his childhood. And that is when I felt that the themes of this film are universal. It's a sweet movie about these in-between moments, a charming window into these people's lives. It's much better than I could really have expected, considering Mai Mai didn't have the splash that Katabuchi's next movie did. The only video I ever saw on it was Cause, which is definitely worth watching if you want a second opinion. The funny thing is that it got kickstarted a couple years back, so now there is actually a full release. It's never been easier to find Mai Mai Miracle. It's great that many fans have supported the project. So now the movie is easily available if you want to rent it off YouTube or Amazon Prime. You can even buy it on Blu-ray. And I'd definitely recommend all three depending on what your preference is. Hell, one of the girls actually got us this excellent AMA from the director, which talks about his process and his history in anime in general. I would definitely check it out. This, so far, has been the unexpected highlight of Madhouse Month 2. I hope to see Katabuchi more in the future. Thank you for joining. If you liked it, like it, share it, or ring the bell if you want to see the rest of Madhouse Month, we've got to thank the patrons. That's Alex Morati, Joven, and Daniel Strait. And I hope to see you in another three days. If I make the deadline, that is. Catch you then. Ciao.